We have new data with ROPEG interferon that were presented at the last ASH meeting in December 2019 and during the EHA meeting in June 2020. First of all, in the randomized comparative trial of ROPEG versus conventional therapy with hydroxyurea, the PROUD and continuation PV studies, we could show that the very high complete hematological response rate was durable, achieved with ROPEG and was durable, with more than 60% of patients still in CHR after four years of treatment, compared to only 43% in the control arm. Uh, in addition, uh, an interesting finding also of the study with long-term use of the drug is that you know that these patients start with one injection subcutaneously every two weeks at the beginning of treatment, but with longer use of the drug, we were happy to see that almost 40% of patients could switch to just one monthly administration of the drug. So they do themselves self-administration, one injection per month, and have their disease control with complete hematological response and surprisingly very low incidence of those specific side effects that we usually see with interferon, for example, psychiatric side effects that were very rare, only 1% of patients had adverse events uh, of a psychiatric uh, type like depression, for example. In addition, after four years of treatment, we had the first cases of complete molecular response, meaning for 13% of the patients in the ROPEG arm, the JAK2 mutation was no longer detectable, while none of the patients in the control group had such a decrease in their JAK2 mutation. And this is really very important for the long term, and we hope that this will really change the uh, natural history of the disease. The other new finding with ROPEG is, uh, was provided at the EHA meeting by Professor Titiano Barbui from Italy, where he presented the uh, preliminary results of a low-risk PV study, low PV study that they conducted, comparing the conventional strategy, phlebotomy plus low-dose aspirin, versus this strategy plus ROPEG interferon to see if this could improve the rate of patients achieving uh, a nematocrit below 45% without phlebotomy and no disease progression. And indeed, the enrollment was stopped after the analysis of the first 100 patients who were enrolled in the study because they already see a significant difference with 84% of patients in the ROPEG arm achieving this primary endpoint compared to only 60% in the phlebotomy plus aspirin only treatment. So this may also probably change our strategy of management of so-called low-risk PB patients, meaning that they are both younger than 60 years of age and never experienced any vascular event.